RTFM, read the effing manual. It's a phrase that gets said a lot, especially in Linux support forms. When you go to a Linux support form and you ask a dumb question or you ask a question without properly doing some research on your own before seeking help. But really, everyone should be practicing RTFM, reading the manuals, including myself. I made a video about Spectre WM yesterday, the, trying out Spectre WM for the first time, and I actually did read the man page, or I said that I read the man page for Spectre WM, but I did miss some stuff about Spectre WM. I, on that video, I mentioned a couple of things that I didn't think were possible in Spectre WM that absolutely are possible. And then, just last night, late last night, I was... Playing around in Qtile, I was really looking deep into some of the Python code for Qtile, and I discovered a feature that exists in Qtile that I never knew was there. And I've been a Qtile user for many years, and I don't think most people that use Qtile actually know this feature exists. So let's start with Spectre WM. Let me show you my mistake with Spectre WM. So on my video yesterday, this is Qtile by the way, I am going to launch Spectre WM, though I'll launch it in Zephyr. So let me bring up a terminal and I'm going to zoom in here. And I've made a video about Zephyr for those of you uh, wondering what Zephyr is. It's one of the Xorg programs. It basically allows me to test the config of a window manager without actually having to be inside that window manager. It's basically going to launch, well, you'll see what this does. It launches this window here. It's almost like a virtual machine, but it's not really a virtual machine. I'm going to move that out of the way. And then inside that window, I am going to run this command, display equals colon one space specter WM. And when I do that, that window is now running specter WM. Let me switch to this view so it's a, a little cleaner. So when I made my video on Spectre WM yesterday, you know, taking a look at it for the first time, uh, I mentioned that the panel at the top is a very simple panel, and I mistakenly said I don't think you can do anything except plain text in that bar. Just plain text, because I couldn't get Unicode characters to render properly in the bar, I didn't think it supported colored emojis, I also mentioned I didn't think you could vary the color of the text in the bar, I think I uh, said that the text all had to be one color. That was a complete mistake, and you guys called me out on that. A couple of you guys said, man, you didn't read the man page, because in the man page, it specifically says you can have these Unicode characters and uh, colored emojis, and that you can have uh, varying colors of text. But the thing is, uh, I understand why I made that mistake, because... Before I did the Spectre WM video, I did research Spectre WM a little bit, and I, I looked at a million screenshots of Spectre WM, and I had never seen that bar look any differently than just plain text, all one color. So even though the man page says it supports colored text and colored emojis, I think it's a new feature. I don't think it's been in Spectre WM that long. And I think probably a lot of people, unless they've looked at Spectre WM recently, probably don't know that feature actually exists. So let me switch back to my desktop here. Of course, this is my Qtile desktop, but it doesn't matter. What I want to do is we want to take a look at the Spectre WM man page. So I'm going to man Spectre WM and I'm going to page down. And so if I scroll down a little bit and get to some of the information about the bar font colors, it says that you can set up to 10 colors for bar font color up to 10 colors they need to be separated by commas it's a comma separated list and then to specify the color you want to use you have to use this markup sequence which is plus then the at sign then fg for foreground equals n the number of the color in the list zero through nine and then you have to end it with a semicolon so if I show you this in action, let me do a vertical split and I'll just open up my Spectre WM config file. Then if I go down to the bar format, you will see I have plus at FG equals five semicolon. What that does is everything after that will now be the fifth color in that list here. So it would be 89 DDFF. And that is the clock color actually in my Spectre WM, you see the clock is this kind of aquamarine kind of color, the blue-green color. Let me go back to 
Vim here. Let me get back into the man page. I'm going to quit out of that man page. And yes, the man page does open in Vim. <laughs> Some of you probably are wondering, how in the heck did I do a vertical split in Vim inside a man page? Because uh, I have Vim set as my man page reader, not less. Typically less is the default man pager, but I have mine set to Vim. Anyway, so this is the Spectre WM config. I'm, this time I'm going to do a vertical split and I'm going to open up my bar action script. Now the bar action script is basically just a bash script. And what this does is it puts some of the extra information in my Spectre WM bar. So it is actually what is giving me the CPU, mem, hard disk space, volume, and the time and date. I go back here, you see date, hard disk, mem, CPU. If I scroll down a little bit, you will see a bunch of instances of that weird tag here. The plus at symbol foreground equals one semicolon. Basically, this is setting the colors for everything in that bar. And you see I had to put a million of them because you set a color for one character. But if you want the next uh, thing to be a different color, then you have to go back and set the foreground color to something else. Also, you see plus at fn equals one plus at fn equals zero. What is this? This is how you set multiple fonts in Spectre WM, because that was the problem getting the Unicode characters to render properly. By default, I thought it could only render just one font in the, in the bar, so I had my font set to Mononoke Nerd Font. And Mononoke Nerd Font did not handle these colored emojis, but I didn't know I could specify a second, like a backup font, where... You know, I set that to a more appropriate emoji font, which I set to Joy Pixels. And now the Unicode characters have no problem rendering. If I showed you that actually in the config file, let me go back up to where I set the fonts. So you see right here, bar font and then equals Mononoke nerd, nerd font, size 13, and then a comma, because again, comma separated values, then Joy Pixels, size 13. So I have two fonts. Font 0 is Mononoke nerd font, font 1 is Joy Pixels. So you can see here, font 1 here sets Joy Pixels because Joy Pixels has to render that emoji. And then right after that, I go back to Mononoke nerd font for the plain text which is the CPU information. I hope that makes sense. So I really appreciate you guys letting me know about this stuff because it was in the man page, but honestly, you could read that man page for Spectre WM and honestly, you would miss the little extra bits about the uh, um, emojis and about setting multiple colors in the bar. Also, that man page could be written a little better, the parts about the colors, because I wasn't exactly sure, you know, how to use the markup tags, the plus at foreground equals one, for example, here. Did that need to be in the script here, you know, your standard config file, or could that be in the bar action script? Well, it can be in both places, but to do it in the bar action script, you do have to have a setting in the Spectre config. You have to have this line here, and I don't think this line is here by default. This is the only line, I think, the only setting I actually had to look up and add. Bar underscore action underscore expand, and that has to be set to 1. And what this does is in your bar action script, it expands these tags to actually be the proper colors or fonts or whatever. So you do have to have that setting. So that's pretty cool that you can, you know, customize the bar to look a little better with some fancy colors and some colored emojis and things like that. I was fine with just the plain text bar anyway, but I know it was a deal breaker for some of you guys that watched my video yesterday. You're like, man, I can't deal with a bar that's just plain text, all one color. I need something fancier. Well, there you go. Now, getting back to Qtile. So uh, I've been living a lot in Qtile here the last couple of weeks, other than, you know, spending a couple of days in Spectre WM so I could make that video about Spectre WM. But Qtile is fantastic, and I really know a lot about Qtile as far as, you know, I've really dived into the code and, and kind of know my way around Qtile. But the other day, I was wondering something. If you've ever used the Awesome Window Manager, the Awesome Window Manager has this really cool feature where if you type super s on the keyboard a window displays and that window shows you all the key bindings that you have set in awesome window manager it is a just fantastic feature i think every tiling window manager should have that feature but 
none of them really have that feature other than awesome. And I thought, man, wouldn't it be cool if I could get something like that up and working in Qtile? And digging around the Qtile documentation a little bit, I did find a really cool command that you can run. Let me open up a terminal here and I'm going to zoom in. So one of the cool things about Qtile is it does have some command line functions that you can just pass on to it in the terminal or in a run command launcher. Qtile has a built-in run prompt. It's basically a Python wrapper around D menu. But here in the terminal, I will run this command, Qtile command, space, dash O, space, CMD, space, dash F, space, and then this command here, display, underscore, KB, for display key bindings, I'm assuming. And there are all of my key bindings, which is really, really cool. Uh, it's not in a very readable format, unfortunately, but I did not know that existed. So I don't think most people know this feature actually exists in Qtile, that you can run that kind of command and get a listing of your key bindings. Again, it, the formatting is, is pretty bad. I wish somebody that knew a little Python worked on this a little bit and made it more readable. And that's kind of what I thought, you know, I might take a look at the code. I'm not exactly a Python guru. I'm not a Pythonista, but I wanted to take a look at the code. So I, I know the file that this thing is using to, to draw this table here. So I'm going to open up NVim. This particular file here, it's in user lib, python, site-packages, libqtile, core, and then the name of the program is manager.py. So let's open up manager.py. It's going to ask for my sudo password because I launched it with sudo, and just in case I want to edit anything. And if I scroll down, actually, I'll just look for the function. So we know what the function was called. It's display underscore kb for display key bindings. And one of the things when I was looking at the code here, as I notice that the result equals format table and then result add keysim mod command description. And that got me to thinking. So by default in my Qtile config and most everybody else's Qtile config, the mod key, of course, is the super key or the alt key. So everybody knows what mod is. Keysim is the keys that come after the mod key. So you always have mod key plus something else as the key binding and then command. Command is the command that mod plus key sim runs. But then I saw this here, D-E-S-C for description. Description. I didn't know description was an option for Qtile. As far as in your key bindings, you could add a description and it makes sense because if you could add a description, that would make printing out a list of your key bindings that much more presentable because now you have a real world kind of a sentence a descriptor. Let me open up another terminal here and in Vim I'm going to open up what my config file for Qtile looked like and what most of yours probably looked like. And this is pretty much a standard default Qtile config. You have your key bindings here, key and then equals the mod key. Remember, mod here in manager.py, and then mod plus k, and then k would be the key sim, and then what is the command? Well, lazy.layout.down basically moves the window down through the window stack. And that would be the command. But where is the description? They don't put descriptions, actually, in the default Qtile config. That's why nobody knows it's even an option. But it is. So I scoured GitHub for everybody's config.py, that's your Qtile config, and I could not find anybody with a config.py that included descriptions inside their key bindings. So again, I don't think this is a feature that anyone really knows about, but I finally figured it out. Uh, I read through some of the Python code, not this particular file. There's another one that I was able to examine to figure out exactly the format. The description needs to come after you know, the mod, the key sim, the command, and then the last thing in the list needs to be a description. I, I want to say it needs to be in the format here. You know, put a comma after that and then D-E-S-C equals and then in single quotes actually put a description here. So you could put moves the window up in the stack, you know, for a description. And let me quit out of that. I'm not going to write that. That was just the default config. Let me show you guys my actual config file. So this is 
my real config file. And what I did is I went through it and I added as a description for every single key binding I had. You see, mod return does a lazy spawn my term. My description for it is simply launches the terminal. And then the next key binding, the description, D menu run launcher. Toggle through layouts, kill active window, restart QTAL, shut down QTAL. And by doing all of this, let me get out of that. And then if I run that QTAL command again for display key bindings, you know, you can see that I actually have the key bindings now. And under the key bindings, I have the description. So that would be useful in making something kind of like that feature I talked about in the awesome window manager where you had a key binding and a window pops up and shows you all your key bindings and what they do. Uh, again, I don't know much about Python. I really need to look into the manager.py and see if I could format this in a better way because it really needs to be in more of a tabled format. Uh, let me make the font a little smaller. If I run the command again, this is typically what it looks like. It's got some line breaks in it, but you know, it's difficult to read. Also, it's organized. It looks like alphabetically. That's probably not the best way <laughs> to, to do this. You probably want it listed the way it's listed in your config file because you probably organized the key bindings for, you know, grouped them in a certain way in your config file. And it would be nice if it spit them out in that order. But at least that's a starting point. I, I may dive a little deeper into the, the Python and see if I can get that worked out. Anyway, I just wanted to share with you a couple of cool features uh, in Spectre WM and in Qtile. Things that you wouldn't know existed, things I wouldn't know is, existed until you actually read the manual, right? <laughs> if I wouldn't have read the man page, seriously read the man page in Spectre WM, I would have never known that those colors and uh, emojis were available in the bar uh, because I, I didn't see anybody ever using it. So it, it seemed like nobody really knew about it. The same thing with the descriptions for the key bindings in Qtel. I've never seen anybody mention that before. So I think a lot of people have never come across that and unless you happen to have been reading that manager.py file that I, I just read, you know, I, it, it just jumped out at me when I read that line and I saw key sim mod command description. I was like, whoa, description is not part of key bindings. You can add a description. It's like, whoa, mind blown. So this has really served as a wake up call to me. I need to be a little more careful as far as RTFM reading the effing manuals. I hope this serves as a wake up call for you guys. Maybe you dive a little bit deeper into some of the documentation with some of the programs you use on a daily basis. Now, before I go, this show was produced by Michael Mitchell, Chris, DJ, Donnie, Dylan, George, Haplow, Nate, Libre, Quest, Omri, Rob, Sean, and Willie. These guys, they are the producers of the show. Without these guys, this episode wouldn't have been possible. The show is also brought to you by each and every one of these ladies and gentlemen. All these names you're seeing on the screen right now. This is all of my supporters over on Patreon because this channel is supported by you guys, the community. If you'd like to support me, consider doing so. You'll find DistroTube over on Patreon. All right, guys. Peace.